When it comes to voting someone out first on Survivor, there's usually an obvious reason why that person is voted out. They could be weak in challenges, not fitting in with the tribe, playing too hard too fast, or simply committing basic Survivor carnal sins, like looking for idols or leaving the group, making you an easy target three days into the game. And in over 40 seasons of Survivor, these are the common ways to have the ever so unfortunate distinction of being the first person voted out. However, sometimes when someone is voted out first, it's not for any of these reasons. In fact, it usually has nothing to do with their bad gameplay whatsoever. It's just that very rare circumstances led them to being voted out first. So while most first boots are laughed at or forgotten in Survivor history, for today, we'll take a look at the 5 first boots in Survivor history who did the least amount wrong to get voted out. These 5 boots won't be in any particular order, however, number 1 is a very definitive one, but either way, let's get this list started with number 5. Now for this person, when watching on TV, you would think they were booted in one of the normal ways, that being a poor performance and the challenge. But there was so much that happened behind the scenes that led this person to be voted out first, and that is Darnell Hamilton in Survivor Co. Wrong. And here's the thing with Darnell. Again, when you watch on TV, you may think of him as just a simple scapegoat versus boot who had a bad challenge performance, and that's what caused him to go home. Sure, there are a lot of worse first boots, but this is the reason why many first boots go home. But the thing was, Darnell's Charlie's performance had nothing to do with why he went home. On the Bronze Tribe, he formed a close bond with fellow tribe mate Sydney, and with Alicia being the obvious target on the Bronze Tribe, he was in a pretty good spot. And while him losing the goggles was a bad look, he was still never in really big danger of being the first boot. However, Ali, Scott, Pollard, and Jason, as big of douchebags as they were, started playing the game right away and decided to make a big time move in the first tribal council. Knowing that Elysia was always going to be an easy target, they decided to put themselves in the best position possible and split up the tight duo of Sydney and Darnell and pull in Sydney to their side, which would give them the majority over Jennifer and Alicia. But even despite the strategy, Alicia still almost went home, as Jason flipped his vote at the first tribal council due to simply not being able to handle the quote blondie and bonded with Darnell really well. And that's the thing about Darnell, I don't even think you can make the argument that he didn't make the relationships that Sydney did. I actually think Darnell was better socially in those first three days in Sydney. It's just simply that Scott and Jason were all about strength, and with Sydney being stronger than Darnell, out of the two, they decided that Sydney would be more beneficial to keep than Darnell. So to sum it up, I really don't think Darnell did much of anything wrong, with maybe only making his alliance with Sydney a little too obvious. He was fine socially, maybe even better than Sydney, and losing his goggles in that long of a challenge is never a reason why anybody would ever go home. Jason and Scott simply made a long term game move, which ironically ended up buying them in the ass, but unfortunately for Darnell, it meant he would go down Survivor history as a first boot. On the bright side, he was the catalyst behind the curse of the aqua dump. For number 4, I debated whether or not I should include this person, as this person is a returning player, a returning player first boots are always different circumstances than newbie or even mixed cast first boots, so it was hard to compare. But this person literally did nothing wrong except for winning her first season, and that is Tina Wesson in Survivor All Stars. Tina came on All Stars as one of 4 winners and was also paired with fellow winner Ethan Zahn on Saboga. And that was her death sentence. Going into the season, the other 14 players all had one goal, and that was to make sure that a winner didn't get to the end again, since they had already had their time in the spotlight as a Survivor winner. And they were all as clear as targets as any players in Survivor history, with pretty much all four winners guaranteed to be early boots. In All-Stars, Saboga lost her first challenge, and despite some good attempts from Ethan and Tina to appeal to Rupert and Rudy about morales and why Jenna Lewis was the real problem, even though the lovable duo didn't even mess around on the first vote, and unfortunately for Tina, she went from Survivor winner to first boot. To make matters worse, had she been paired with one of the other winners, Richard and Jenna, she would have at least made it past the first tribal, as Richard arguably had the biggest target in Survivor history for being the first Survivor winner, and overall wasn't super likable, and Jenna was really the first winner to be seen as a weak winner, and being the most recent winner, I'm sure Tina would have survived over her. Unfortunately, she just happened to be paired with Ethan, who is literally one of the most likable people to ever play, and was obviously much stronger physically than Tina, making Tina the easy boot over Ethan for Saboga. Now again, a lot of returning player first boots had more circumstances than usual to being voted out first. For example, Sugar was the weakest member, not a part of the pre-game majority alliance in Heroes vs. Villains, Francesca was an easy target for already being voted out first, and everyone knew about Natalie and Jeremy's relationship, which made them an easy target at the first tribal council and winners at war. But none was more unfair and blatant than Tina, 
who really never had a shot, and her only shot to make it past the Purge Tribal Council was against another winner, and she unfortunately was paired with Ethan instead of Rich and Jenna. She committed no obvious sins when it comes to being a first boot. She just simply had the winner's target on her back and never stood a chance. At number three, we move on to the first of two Blood vs. Water players to make the list, and that is from its second edition, Sam Wandel Sir, Naughty Anderson. Now the thing with Nadia, she definitely had her mistakes. The main one being her ridiculous comment to Josh that him being gay made him part of the girls alliance. And just in general, to make a girls alliance in a tribe where the guys outnumber the girls is just flat out ridiculous. And just in general, she didn't really do anything spectacular to keep herself in the game. But out of all the reasons why someone was voted out, this may not only be the most ridiculous reason for her first boot, but in all of Survivor. She was targeted for being seen as a cutthroat player on The Amazing Race. The funny thing is, I don't think half the players on the cast had seen much of any of Survivor, much less a show like The Amazing Race, but reality TV fans the Wentworth sure had, and knowing he was a clear target, Dale Wentworth threw out a last ditch effort plan to save himself, and instead of throwing someone under the bus for the usual Survivor mistake cliches, he threw out Nadia as a target for being seen as a cutthroat player on The Amazing Race. Now first of all, I don't watch The Amazing Race and don't know the logistics Dale was talking about when it came to the Andersons gameplay, but no matter how cutthroat the Andersons may have appeared to be, to compare The Amazing Race gameplay where it involves traveling around the world to the cutthroat gameplay of Survivor is so ridiculous that I guess you could say it's so ridiculous that it worked. Now to be fair, I think the guys alliance was always going to happen this season and Dale would have been safe anyway. But the fact that Nadia was targeted despite being the strongest woman due to moves on a completely different show has to be a first way to go home in any way, much less to be the reason you're the first boot of the season. However, it all worked out for the Andersons in the end. As of Nadia being voted out, Nadia was in a far less threatening position and ended up taking the win for the family. At number 2, we move on to the second player from a Blood vs. Water season. And in terms of US Survivor, this person I think did the least amount wrong to be the first boot. And that is Marissa Peterson. Now I know some people could argue that technically Laura and Candace were the first people voted out of the season. But for this list, I'm talking about actual tribal council vote offs, which obviously makes Marissa the first, despite her literally doing nothing wrong. To refresh your memory of Blood vs. Water, the loved ones were all together, and Brad Culpepper was clearly its leader. At the first immunity challenge, the veterans won, and Jervis, Marissa's uncle, showboated quite a bit after winning, much to the anger of the newbies, especially Brad Culpepper. Now Culpepper was a professional athlete, and he and the rest of the tribe knew that Marissa was one of their stronger females, and Katie was easily the weakest. Heck, with this being the Blood vs. Wire twist, Brad could have done what he did the next episode, and sent home Rachel first, and tempt Tyson to take her place. But simply due to the antics that Jervis displayed at the media challenge, Brad decided to get back at him, and show the other veterans what would happen if they were to do the exact same thing, and Marissa was sent home in a unanimous vote. Again, Marissa wasn't exactly in the best position, but with Brad in charge and the guys having a clear easy majority, you can't really blame her for not being at the top. And I would argue that out of the females, she was in the least amount of trouble going home first. But simply due to her uncle Jervis overdoing his celebration, she was sent home to Redemption Island, where at least she did have a good showing, but at the end of the day, you can't help but feel bad for her and wonder how far she would have gone had it not been for Jervis. Those Thanksgiving dinners must have been pretty awkward for a while after that. Now at number 1, I have the person who inspired me to make this video, and with how the season's going, maybe a fading first boot to this train wreck season. Spoilers for those of you who are not currently watching Australian Survivor, but at number 1, without question the most unfair first boot in Survivor history, I have Phil Ferguson from Australian Survivor Brains vs. Braun. Let's just go through this episode and show just how ridiculous the chains of events were that led a poor Phil Survivor dream ending in 2 days and going down in history as a first boot. First of all, let's talk about Australian Survivor in general and its ridiculous overpowered challenges that are extremely physical. In the season of Brains vs. Brawn, it gives the Brains no choice but to keep the tribe strong for at least their first vote, with 38 year old Weak Link Wei being the target. However, fellow Weak Link George found one of the most ridiculous advantages in Survivor history. The advantage gave George the opportunity to save 6 people from Tribal Council, which is half the freaking tribe. Knowing he had a chance to shake up the game and hopefully get rid of his target Mitch, George saved what he considered the weak links, but for some reason, Phil wasn't part of that group, leaving him as the obvious target of the six left, and was voted out unanimously. Let's talk about how badly George played this round. Aside from the fact that he kept an obvious weak link around in Phil to be voted out, he proceeded to piss off even the people who he saved, and only made it to the merge due to this season being more ridiculous than Survivor Gabon. 
And go figure, he's one of the front runners to win now. If he really wanted Mitch gone, he should have kept the fellow weak links there with Mitch being the only strong member, and then Mitch could have been the easy vote out. Or, you know, not piss off the entire tribe and vote out Way in an easy first vote. Now, you could argue that Phil shouldn't have put himself in a bad position to begin with, but while I don't know for sure, it didn't even look like he was considered to be a boot for a long time, as George and Way were the obvious targets, and I think the lights of Rachel and Kara will be targeted over Phil as well. To put it frank, I think Phil was a basic lock to make it to the tribe swap, and who knows how his game would have gone at that point. And to put things in perspective, Haley is far and away the best player this season, and could possibly win at the time of writing this. But more than likely, if George would have saved Phil and kept someone like a beta at that tribal council, Haley would have gone home, simply for being the weakest link of the six remaining. So Phil had his survivor dream and due to a variety of ridiculous reasons. The brain tribe literally being forced to go with a bronze style first boot, George playing the vote in the absolute worst way possible, with Phil being the only weak member he didn't save, sending him home. And again, I'm not saying Phil would have gone on to win the season, but just look how close Haley came to going home due to this ridiculous twist and bad gameplay from George. And don't forget perceived weak players like P and Shane, who weren't in a great position at the first couple of tribals, have gone on to win Australian Survivor. So while not in the best spot ever, Phil was in no danger of going home anytime soon, and unfortunately had his survivor dream end in the most ridiculous way imaginable. So there you have it guys, the 5 first boots in survivor history, who did the least amount wrong to earn their reputation as a first boot. If you like what you see, then hit that like and subscribe button, and share this video with all your survivor friends, and I'll see you guys next time.